Okay folks, Geronami here. Thank you very much for tuning to my channel today. Today I want to talk about uh, these comments made by Richard Dawkins against uh, US presidential candidates believing in creationism. Let me quote Richard Dawkins. He said, the fact that one of the two major political parties, every single candidate except one says they don't believe in evolution. They don't even believe in the fundamental principle of biology, which is a fact. And to Dawkins' words, Kenham, you know Kenham, Creation Museum CEO and President. And Kenham said, Richard Dawkins is blind and has a closed mind for criticizing GOP presidential candidates who identify as creationists and Richard Dawkins was talking to Fox News radio and he said all GOP candidates are creationists and it is disgraceful so if you are a creationist and if you are running for US president you are disgraceful probably Richard Dawkins is referring to Ben Carson I don't know Ben Carson who is now running for the president of uh, United States. He once said that Charles Darwin's theory of evolution was inspired by forces of evil. And Dawkins recently also criticized earth, young earth creationists, you know, creationists who believe that earth is only 6,000 years old. And Dawkins said there is no way that earth can be 6,000 years old. In the interview, Dawkins was asked, whether he would ever change his mind on God. And he said, just show me some evidence and I will change. And Kenham said these words. Dawkins has been shown overwhelming evidence by many people and the atheist author reminds him of the Pharisees in John chapter 9. After Jesus had healed the man blind from birth, the Pharisees questioned the man and his parents and even with the evidence glaring at them, they refused to believe. People like Dawkins also remind me of the chief priests in John 12.10 who wanted to kill Lazarus, the man Jesus raised from the dead. Because of their hardened hearts, they refused to believe Jesus raised Lazarus and decided to try to kill Lazarus to get rid of the evidence. Yes, there are apt comparisons when you consider people like Richard Dawkins, we need to pray for him. His heart is hard and he is blind. So here is Ken Ham who said Dawkins has spent most of his life rejecting the writings of Moses, particularly Genesis, and trying to get as many people as he can to follow his rebellious lifestyle that leads directly to hell. So Kenham is saying that Richard Dawkins is taking millions of people to hell while Richard Dawkins is saying that creationist candidates are disgraceful. So think of that folks. Here is uh, Richard Dawkins calling creationists disgraceful. By that logic, Abraham Lincoln is disgraceful because he believed in Bible. Lincoln believed in special creation. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Those are the words of Lincoln in Gettysburg Gattis. By this logic, we have to call George Washington as disgraceful, the father of the nation, he believed in creation and the biblical account written in the book of Genesis. By that account, you have to call Thomas Jefferson as disgraceful. James Madison should be called disgraceful. FDR should be called disgraceful. Theodore Roosevelt should be called disgraceful. Ronald Reagan should be called disgraceful because they all believed in creation. They used those biblical principles to guide this nation. Take for example Abraham Lincoln. He delivered his second inaugural address on March 4, 1865. 
in his second inauguration speech as the United States president, he actually described so much about God's providence. At one point he said God's will might have been in allowing the civil war to come because it had assumed the terrible dimensions. At one point he says these words I quote, wringing their bread from the sweat of other men's faces. Note those words, wringing their bread from the sweat of other men's faces. That's a direct allusion to the story of creation in the book of Genesis. That's a reference to fall of man as a result of Adam's sin. God tells uh, Adam that in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust the what and unto dust shall thou return. You see, Abraham Lincoln, arguably the greatest president of the United States, was tackling this problem of uh, slavery from a creationist viewpoint in his second inauguration speech. That's how much the creationist view has influenced the mind and the ideas of Abraham Lincoln. So using Richard Dawkins' logic, Abraham Lincoln must be a disgraceful candidate to run for the White House. Lincoln not only believed in Genesis' account of uh, God's special creation, he used these creation principles to combat evils such as racism and slavery and inequality. You see folks, God created one couple, Adam and Eve. And no matter where we are in this world, we are all children of that one couple. There is no scope for discrimination there. You should not be discriminating someone born to your mother, right? But Darwinism portrays a different picture. It shows that the gradual progress of species, primates are evolving, homo sapiens are evolving. Black people are evolving, brown people are evolving, yellow people are evolving, white people are evolving. And the, the, and the Darwinism shows one race of people below the other race of people. In fact, Charles Darwin said that black people are between orangutans and homo sapiens. And Darwinism became a bedrock principle for such evils like slavery, racism and inequality. You know Hitler, he used Darwinism when he discriminated Jews. So Ben Carson rightly observed that Charles Darwin's theory of evolution was inspired by forces of evil. Because more than any other group of people, black people suffered a lot because of Darwinian theory of evolution. And also Darwinism inspired colonialism. And European powers attacked Asia and Africa and South America and enslaved millions of people because they always believed that because of Darwinian evolutionary progress, they are empowered to subjugate these colored people. So you see folks, colonialism and uh, Holocaust, all these evils we have seen in the recent past, they came directly from Darwinian worldview. I'm not blaming Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin lived a very peaceful life, but his ideas and the people who took those ideas and took them to the extremes, to their logical conclusion. They are the people who wreaked havoc on this world. And it is sad that black scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson, they are believing in evolution because black people are discriminated and they are still being discriminated because of Darwinian evolution. You might say, what is your evidence, Geronomy? Let me tell you one thing, James Watson, this James Watson, he is the Nobel Prize winner for the discovery of the structure of DNA. And he runs one of the America's uh, leading scientific research institutions. He told Sunday Times, I quote, He was inherently gloomy about the prospect of Africa. All our social policies are based on the fact that their intelligence is the same as ours. Whereas all the testing says not really. 
So James Watson, he was not saying these things accidentally. He wrote this in his book. Let me quote from his book. There is no firm reason to anticipate that the intellectual capacities of peoples geographically separated in their evolution should prove to have evolved identically. Our wanting to reserve equal powers of reason as some universal heritage of humanity will not be enough to make it so. End of quote. So you see folks, here is James Watson, the co-discoverer of the structure of DNA, a staunch believer in Darwinian theory of evolution. Listen to his words. There is no firm reason to anticipate that the intellectual capacities of peoples geographically separated in their evolution should prove to have evolved identically. So black people, you did not evolve as other peoples like yellow people, brown people, white people. So you are not that smart. Folks, that is where you end up when you believe in evolution. But take Ben Carson. Every one of us should be proud of this great doctor. He was one of the greatest brain surgeons ever lived. He was born in poverty. But you see, he believed in God. He believed in creationism. He accepted Jesus as his personal savior and Lord. And he also believed in a Genesis account written in the Bible, chapters 1 to 3. And Ben Carson specialized in traumatic brain surgeries, brain and spinal cord tumors. And he worked as a professor of neurosurgery, oncology, plastic surgery, and pediatrics. And he was actually at one point director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital. And in 1987, he successfully separated actually conjoined twins. And he led a team of like 70 surgeons. And they operated on these conjoined twins like 22 hours. And both twins survived. What's the point, Geronimi? The point, folks, is you don't have to believe in Darwinian evolution to become a great surgeon and scientist. Ben Carson proved that. You can be a creationist and you can become a great brain surgeon. So Richard Dawkins saying the fact that one of the two major political parties, every candidate except one, says that they don't believe in evolution. They don't even believe in the fundamental principle of biology, which is a fact. So Dawkins is saying evolution is a fact. Actually, evolution is not a fact. Evolution only a, an imaginary idea. No one ever observed that one species of animals becoming another species of animal. We, we have never observed that. Most of the, we, what we observe is that animals are actually disappearing from this world. We are not seeing new species of animals coming. What we are seeing, witnessing is extinction of animals. There is so much extinction going on. And even if you look at the fossil evidence, all the groups of uh, these different species, they all appeared suddenly after the, during the Cambrian explosion. So the Darwinian tree of life, you cannot see in the fossil record. It's not there. It's only in the imagination of people like Richard Dawkins. So you see folks, fossil record, biochemical evidence, history, all this prove that creation is a fact, a scientifically proven fact. It's not Darwinism. I hope these things help more than uh, every, anything else. You need to accept Jesus as your personal savior and Lord. As Ken Ham said, Richard Dawkins is uh, taking so many millions of people to hell because he's teaching them there is no creator, there is no God, there is no judge, there is no punishment for sin, there is no judgment there is no hell but you see there is the creator there is the hell and heaven there is a savior and we need to come to that savior who is jesus christ our lord and hope this helps thank you very much